So it's been a couple of months since I last released a build and honestly, that's way too long. So what we're gonna be doing today is talking about this here, which is the Scotto Ergo. Now this board, if you're not aware, I've been teasing it for a few months now and it's pretty much the evolution of the Scotto Fly keyboard, which if you're not aware what that one was, it's basically my first like super Ergo board that I thought is probably my most comfortable board I've designed at least for me. And that board kind of evolved into the Scotto Split, which was a VGA keyboard. And then now it's on this iteration, which is the Scotto Ergo, that's gonna use an aviator connector for the USB, Raspberry Pi Pico mounted in the middle, and then it has 10 degrees of tenting there along with the 20 degrees of tilt. It is MX, so it is a little bit high profile, so wrist rest might be nice for it. But with that said, the first thing I need to do in order to proceed with anything on this board is I have to test the fitment of the controller right here, the Raspberry Pi Pico, because we're gonna actually use the test points on the back here to mount into the aviator connector. And I have to actually rip off this connector. I'll desolder it as cleanly as I can, but I'm probably just gonna clip it off. But what we have to do with that is get it mounted inside of here and what we're gonna use are sockets like some of my other boards. So I'm gonna do that first before we proceed with anything because if that doesn't work, I have to go back to the drawing board on this. And that is bad if I have to do that because it uses a lot of waste material and a lot of failed prints. I went through about an entire roll of filament to actually get this board printed and it was expensive filament I was using because it's like that blue matte PLA. With all that said, Let's try getting the controller mounted first, and then after that we can proceed with building it. So I'm just gonna take these sockets and I'm gonna actually mount them on the back here because going through the top there would be a little bit harder to get them flush. So I'm just gonna take them here and just mount them, which I might have to do some sanding. Actually, no, I don't. I don't have to sand anything, that's pretty good. Normally I have to sand these sockets when I put them in, but right here we could just kind of get them right in. So now those are all mounted in there as you can see. Now I have to actually glue them in place so they don't pull out when you socket the controller which will actually be hard to kind of do because you're gonna have to like go through the back to do it i'm going to be doing my typical method where i use uv resin just to kind of glue them in place i love using this stuff for any application like this it's just super easy but i'm going to do that real quick Now the next step after getting the sockets mounted in here is I have to take this here, the Pi Pico, and disconnect the micro USB. I'm gonna see if I can desolder it, but I might end up just snapping it off because we're gonna be using the test points in the back to wire it into an aviator connector. So it looks like on the back here, I can actually just remove these here and it should come off for the most part. All right, that is not doing what I wanted it to. I'm gonna do the nuclear option and I'm just gonna snap it off because why not? This is probably the most gruesome thing I've ever done on my channel when I think about it, is that I am literally just completely mutilating this Pi Pico, which I know there's probably a better way to do this. There absolutely has to be, but for simplicity, the destructive method is quicker. So now that's mounted nice in there, as you can see, missing the connector so it fits perfectly. What I have to do now is I have to actually get the pins from here mounted into those. And what I'm gonna do for this, I'm gonna use diode legs, but I actually have to sacrifice some diodes because when I was pre-coiling my diodes for this video, I forgot to save the legs to them. So I basically have to sacrifice 40 diodes to get this mounted. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna just take the legs off these and then mount those in there. So the way we do this is I take a diode, put it through here into one of the sockets. So you can kind of feel it snap in there and you can use them to align it. I'm gonna do this the four corners first, and then I'm gonna go through and do the rest of them. So there's the four corners pinned in, and now I'm just gonna go through and do every single one. I had a little solder splash on that pin there. Then I'm gonna have to clean up with a sucker real quick. Look how stupid that is, that's so dumb. There they all are after being snapped off. And what's cool is that if I put this down here and then take this piece of plexiglass, I'm not gonna push it in now because if I do, it's pretty much permanently in there and I still need the reset button. But basically that will go on there and it'll be clear and you'll be able to see the controller underneath, which will look really neat, I think. But what I wanna do next is I want to wire up the connectors on the back here. So these test points here, I wanna connect those to the aviator connector now. And I'm gonna take some of my ethernet cable here, which I wanna mention at this point, you can't see it, but I pretty much prepared everything for this build. So like here are the pre-bent wires. I pre-coiled my diodes. And that's kind of a tip I have now with my builds. And if you're building a hand wire board in general is that if you prepare everything ahead of time, it makes it a lot easier when you're actually building it. So you don't have to be doing that stuff as you're building. You can kind of just build the board. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this and I'm going to try to connect some wires to those test points.
Whoops. So I'm gonna have to start from scratch with the controller because I just ripped off the pad for TP1. I don't know how much of that last section is gonna make it into the video because it was a massive pain in the ass because the tolerances in here are just so close together that aligning the wires is super, super hard to do. What I'm ready to do now is set the heat set inserts first, wire it up as any hand wire keyboard, and then I can actually just flash the firmware on it. But let's start with the heat set inserts now. I might end up putting glue on them depending on how the back plate mounts because they are a little bit loose with the tolerances between the holes I made. And we're gonna be using these here, which are Akko Lavender Purple Switches. I've used these on some of my other builds and I really like them and I thought they'd match very well with this board here because I think we'll give it a nice sound. But all I'm gonna do is just mount these into plate real quick and then we can go through and start soldering all the components. Now basically I'm on the last part of this build is that I have to wire up every single column and row to the controller. But what I have to do with this build differently is that I need to take note of which pins I'm routing them to. So when I go and code the firmware, I easily remember which ones to actually put everything to. Everything's wired up, the firmware's flashed, everything works. Now what needs to happen is I need to clean up this giant mess here so I can assemble the board. So I'll be back in just a second. Now I'm just gonna take the back plate and screw it onto here. I'm gonna use M2 by four screws. So just slightly thicker than what this is, just because I don't wanna put too much pressure on the standoff since they're just kind of in there. Now that the back's on, we're gonna put it down. We're gonna take these keycaps, which are just gray DSA blanks to match the bottom. So the navy and gray theme. The final touch is to take this right here, which is a piece of clear plexiglass. And I'm going to use a towel really quick to wipe the backside so it's clean because once I get this in here, I don't think I'm getting it out. It's gonna be very hard to do. And then we'll take this, we'll slot it in, polish that on up. And that is the Scotto Ergo. Fully completed with aviator connector, 36 keys. That feels pretty good. That controller right there looks absolutely incredible. Underneath the plexiglass right in the middle like that. I really, really, really like that. Other than that, this is a keyboard video. So what would this be without a typing test? So we're gonna type on it and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. So that's the entire build process of the Scotto Ergo. Here it is again, and I think it just, it looks incredible. The plexiglass over the controller is great. It sounds great when I type on it. It feels comfortable to type on. It looks great. I just, I'm very happy with how the build came out. I think it's a really good evolution to the Scotto Fly. I don't know if I can evolve it any further now other than maybe rounding it. I, I don't know. We'll see where it goes if I have any other ideas for the Scotto Fly. But I did want to mention here quickly that I recently launched scottokeeps.com, which is my website for the project to kind of live at. So you can find the builds on there, find info about them, where you can find the files, stuff like that. Of course, the tools and stuff I use, all that good info, but also it has a shop. So if you want to kind of support me, you can do it on there and get like a keyboard case if you don't have access to a 3D printer. So just kind of something I threw together recently. But really, I don't have anything else to say here. So with that said, like the video if you liked it, comment on the video if you want to comment on it, subscribe if you want to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.